there is a similar need for equity in growing uh, economies and especially in uh, middle income countries. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent, and uh, thank you to the organizer for giving me the opportunity to be part of this uh, important discussion. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Laurent, if you allow me, I will just uh, set a scene by saying, in fact, what uh, uh, a great economist once said, I think, a couple of months ago, the fate of the global economy does not depend on what the virus induces, but on how we choose to react. And this is true. This is true for large and developed economy and uh, developing economy. And it's even more true when we realize that moving from the first emergency phases onto the next is not simply a matter of uh, tweaking the medicine. It is for some countries a major serious surgery. Governments are now starting to think about the longer terms and how the structure of their economy is to evolve post-crisis. So all have, have an objective, have a dream recovery that is uh, green, resilient, fair, and digital. But we have to deal with the dilemma in short term and long term, being involved and being committed, dealing with the liquidity and tackling the solvency and aiming to reach the sustainability of the activity. Morocco, as a, as a medium income country, is certainly no exception to that. The Moroccan economy will have to deal with numerous uh, issues. I can just mention a few of them. The limitation of the public health sector, it's the common denominator of all countries. The precarity of large portion of the population. The reliance on global su supply chain. The unemployment of youth the growth, the education, etc. Like many other governments who are currently rethinking their role in the economy, Morocco will have to imagine a new distribution of role between the public and private sector to better tackle all the obstacles ahead. One of the main challenges facing the Moroccan economy is to preserve the productive capacity of Moroccan companies and in particular the ability to produce jobs and exports. Together with the investment in the education, health, tourism and agriculture, we see that all these initiatives will need a lot of funds, not only public funds, but also private to get off the ground. We need to blend all these type of funding in order to be able to achieve the objective. Many countries rush to keep company afloat, mostly by providing guaranteed loan, as it was said. Unfortunately, these type of large-scale public guarantee schemes happen not to be enough to keep company solvent. Therefore, public equity is important, as you said, at this very moment. And here again, Morocco and I guess all medium income countries are no exception. First, because we believe that, that injecting, in fact, public funding in the form of equity in the key area of the economy will bring a series of key benefits that the productive sector in Morocco is crucially in need of. <coughs> King Mohammed VI announced in his speech on October 9th a stimulus package of 11 billion euro, which represent 12% of GDP, of which 7 billion euro in the format of state guarantee credit, debt, and 4 billion euro earmarked for a newly created strategic investment fund called the Mohammed VI Fund for Investment. This strategic fund aims at ensuring the financing of PPP projects that are key for Morocco development and the strengthening of capital and own fund of companies to help them in their development. The scope of uh, intervention focus on industrial restructuring, innovation, small and medium-sized enterprise, infrastructure, 
agriculture and tourism. But on the other hand, we are all aware that equity can be more distortionary than other type of aid. The risk to getting out of the crisis with only the most subsidized company left standing, having kind of uh, zombie firms, if you wish, need to be avoided. So this is one thing which is we're all aware and we have in this exercise, keep this in mind. Only financially viable firms should receive solvency support with viability assess considering both the past and the future. We all know that the crisis will alter consumer preference and production systems. Public resources must focus on firms with business models that are expected to be viable in the post-crisis economy. State intervention should support broader social goals, like sustainable goals, from climate change to social cohesion. And to conclude, just to say, with regard to my institution, Caisse de Depot, as you are aware, we are the first institutional investor, in fact, in terms of equity and debt in Morocco, with a long-term focus on sustainable development. We uh, have, in fact, in our DNA, the sustainable development is something which is embedded in it. We, thanks to our, our uh, dual anchoring in the public and in private sector, in the technical engineering, financial engineering, in debt financing and equity financing, in the local fabric and international mar market, we CDG, we intend, in fact, to have a structuring contribution to the national safeguarding and, re and the recovery of efforts. We already deployed uh, several equity funds to invest in own resources of the of the of the Caisse de Depot, around 400 million for the next five years, and working mobilizing internal resource and the international resource from private from private sector and private investor. So we, we will use all our, our, our expertise, our resource to accompany, in fact, the, 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 the economy in this uh, recovery. As I said, uh, in, uh, CDG, we have uh, the sustainable development uh, embedded in our DNA. In fact, we, like uh, Jordan, we were doing it without knowing it before. And now I think we are putting more and more emphasis on this and uh, toward our our capability in uh, in giving uh, 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 in investing in debt or in equity, will uh, this will be more and more uh, uh, visible? In fact, in the way we interact with our our <coughs> uh, the, the the client the the the, the project uh, uh, leader, uh, because we 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 believe that uh, in fact uh, uh, in scaling up effective sustainable development financing. Uh, in operation for, as uh, you know, that in emerging is uh, the market the adaptation subject is is is, is key. So uh, we we believe, as as uh, mentioned, uh, that we have to improve in uh, the way we structure project. We 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 need to unleash also innovation in the way we uh, we we uh, we uh, structure these type of project in order to unlock private investment. This is a strong conviction for us and i think as we are hybrid as i said uh, we uh, during for the last uh, 60 years used to work with the private sector and, uh, and and the public sector it is it is really uh, 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 important that we uh, we uh, uh, combine and blend the the the, the type of uh, of fund but this bear in mind our role is really to, to to make sure that we have uh, in order to to, to uh, um, achieve the goal of uh, uh, SDG we have to make sure that we we measure uh, the, the the impact focus on really the objective of uh, of, of the project or the the way the, the, the company work through the, the ESG type of principles and this is something that will be more and more 
uh, uh, one of the, our guiding, uh, not only principle, but the way we work going forward. <laughs>